At the bottom of the coffin on the back side is where I have placed the power in and the air in connectors. Uh, this is a nice recessed male plug you can get from Granger. It's made uh, by Hubble. Uh, but I couldn't find anything to mount the quarter inch industrial quick disconnect, so I ended up making my own out of a large fender washer that I drilled mounting holes in. The idea is that you can use your standard shop air compressor hose and connect it to the prop and the same thing for the power. Uh, plug in the power here. That way you, you don't have to go inside the prop and hook up stuff. You do it all from the outside. That keeps things uh, nice and neat. And at the foot of the coffin is this compartment, which is where all of the pneumatics and electronics are stored. Um, I've got the power, the pneumatic, valve, cylinder, and the ELK120 all inside here. Uh, it's, it's a little tight inside, uh, but you really shouldn't have to go in here that often unless you change the angle of the prop relative to the ground. That will affect the weight of the lid as it moves through its opening arc. All right. That's the cylinder there. All right, so here's the Smart Home Inline Link Dual Band Relay Module. Uh, power comes in down below. When the inline link is turned on, it switches on an ultraviolet light. It also switches on the uh, Ingersoll Rand valve, which is over here. And uh, I'll give you a close-up of that in a minute. It also turns on a 12-volt power supply for the ELK120 soundboard. ELK makes a box called the ELK129, which you can hook up to the 120 in order to transfer a wave file to it. Uh, there's enough room here to plug in the ELK129 into the 120 and set its jumpers to programming mode. I now use push to connect fittings. I don't use the 8th inch threaded NPT connectors if I can avoid them. The push to connect stuff uses flexible hose you can cut to whatever length you need, which helps keep the layout tight. Automation Direct carries a large selection. All right, so there's the Ingersoll Rand valve. I get these from Granger for around 40 bucks. <clears throat> they sell them in 120 volt AC. 24 volt DC and 12 volt DC configurations. Now, directly to the exhaust port, I've installed a combination muffler and flow control. These are pretty neat. Not only is it muffling the hiss of the air escaping, but allows me to adjust the rate at which the coffin lit closes. Uh, this is flow control too. And this over here is flow control 1 uh, coming off the airline buffer reservoir. Way down there at the bottom is the small reservoir for boosting the cylinder to overcome the initial weight of the lid. A little review on the pneumatic diagram. The small reservoir's purpose is to give the cylinder an initial boost to overcome the initial weight of the lid. The boost amount is controlled by flow control 2. Flow control 1 controls the regular airflow rate and therefore the rate at which the lid opens after its initial weight has been overcome. Flow control 2 should be open at least as much as flow control 1, but it's probably going to be open a lot more. All right, the white jumper block right there is where you connect the ELK129. I've got the ELK120 here mounted so the uh, volume control is at the top. This is what will be adjusted most often. Closing the compartment up. Now this is uh, a little tight, but uh, again, you're not going to go in here that often. And uh, on the top, I've got some black felt uh, 
I put here to give it a non-reflective surface as well as absorb some sound and air from the inside. Another advantage of that Ingersoll Rand valve is that it's pretty quiet. And then I cut a slit here in the felt just big enough to handle the full movement of the, of the piston rod. And attached to the bed of the coffin is a four-foot fluorescent black light. And uh, over at the other end is a speaker that I have connected to the elk. It's mounted sideways so that the sound bounces around inside the coffin.